Right, people, here's another work example. Um, as you can see, it looks a little different. There's not, no lines and arrows. We're trying to take a real situation and then look at that and see the forces acting in them. And by the way, when you walk around your people as civil engineering people, when you walk around, you look at buildings, you look at columns, you look at rafters, braces, and buildings and structures. You should look at buildings now intelligently. You know, most people say, oh, there's a brick and there's a wall. And But as civil engineering people, you, you need to begin to start looking at structures intelligently. You can see what's happening inside the members. Okay. There's a fishing boat there. I read the question. On a fishing boat, a load of 9 kilonewton of fish. There we go. What does kilo mean? Thousand. So that's 9,000 newton. Okay. Submultiple prefix. Must be lifted onto the boat with a jib crane. Right. Now, people, now let's look at the boat here. Some new terms. There's a mast. It's a vertical pole. That's a vertical pole. That there is a pole. It's called a boom. Okay. Or a jib. Now, the word is jib. Jib looks like that. Uh, if you have a crane, um, you know, like these big tall cranes, let me see if I can, let, yeah, it's called a jib, okay, and it's, it's a rigid part of the structure, okay, that means it can be compressed or stretched, it can take up tension and compression, now let me just stop there for the moment, okay, tension and compression, now, if we have a member, Let's say we have a member looks like this. I'm just digressing a little bit, but you need to know this. I say it's a circular bar. And if I squeeze it on both ends with a force, okay, you squeeze it, but the bar doesn't crumble. The bar wants to the bar wants to crush or bend, but it doesn't. So what the bar does, if I draw if I draw a line along the center like so. Okay, by the way, that's that's an axial line that goes the center of its axis, an axial line, okay, and these are axial forces, okay, axial forces mean they act along a center line or an imagined line along the center of the member, okay, so that's an axial, right, and because it's squeezing the member, we say that's an axial compressive load. Compressive load. So all columns in the building, columns, vertical members. If I look at the building, the building looks like this. Mm. Very roughly. Okay. Those are columns. Okay. They are under compression. The load is pushing down on it, but the column resist the other way and say, mm -mm, you ain't going anywhere, I'm going to hold you up in the sky, okay? It's undergoing a compressive load. And as this member undergoes a compressive load, it resists outwardly. It resists outwardly like so, okay? And when we show that in a sketch, we show that as like so. And I'm going to ask these questions, you need to make notes, okay? I'm not teaching you to entertain you. I'm teaching you so that you can learn. Okay. All right. And we show this. So any member undergoing compression, this arrow here shows its internal resistance to the loads acting on the member. And we show it by arrows pointing outwards. And we say there that member is in compression and it is called a strut. So a strut undergoes a compressive load. Okay. So that mast there, because it's carrying the hollowed, and that boom there or jib, same thing, boom, same thing. It's undergoing because this 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 here is holding this whole this there's a hinge here. This boom is holding this whole load outside outside the water in the ship there. If that thing just fell down, that thing would fall down, and the load would bang against the boat or fall back into the water. Okay, so that boom there is under a serious compressive load or the strut. Okay. On the other hand, if we take that same member, you know, if we take the same member, let me throw it over here. Like so and we 
we want to stretch it that means we want to make it longer okay and if I once again draw its center line its imaginary center line along there okay we want to stretch it but because it doesn't fail it doesn't break it doesn't doesn't fail it actually resists inwardly along its center line okay so this is undergoing an axial tensile load axial tensile load it's the opposite to that this member is undergoing an axial tensile load so it resists inwardly and if we draw this in a sketch like that over there you I think you, you I think you're really working yet we show it like this and we show that as a member in tension and we call that a a tie okay so that's a strut under compression we show it like this a lot of people get it wrong okay the force the arrows that the direction of the arrows there show the internal resistance inside the member as a result of the loads acting on the member from the outside so this here is a tie it shows forces acting inwardly because that is how it resists to a load to a stretching load this is a strut it shows uh, it shows arrows going out of it because it resists out of me to a load time to squeeze it together so that's your strut and that's your tie have you got that strut tie compression tension if you show it the other way around if you show a tie as like that it's going to be wrong and it's going to throw a lot of things out and it's going, you're going to get your, your your values wrong and you're going to get sizes wrong and you're going to get answers wrong if you show a strut as doing this it's going to be wrong you need to get it right okay so the mast the boom is in compression that means it's if i it's looking like so and this here is a cable you know it's a cable a cable is a steel rope and the cable can never ever be in compression because it'll just bend a cable is always in tension so we showed like that okay and this rope here is also in tension okay and this rope here which goes around there there's a hinge there there's a pivot there there's a pulley there call a pulley 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 you know it's a pulley a wheel that can spin on an axis that's a pulley over there okay there's a pulley there too so that thing can move and turn and this cable here is also in tension so that cable is in tension that cable is in tension that cable is in tension because cables can't be in compression you can't squeeze them they'll just bend cables can only do can only undergo loads like this that boom there is in compression is pushing outwards and that mass there is pushing outwards carrying the load because there's a downward load there okay people compression compression tension 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 okay Ryan so I'm going to clean the board and we're going to answer the question right people that's my fishing boat I did it again on a fishing boat a load of that must be lifted onto the boat with a jib crane okay the fish net hangs freely from the end so that means that there is a vertical line that's a vertical line so that line and that line is parallel to each other okay so that is a north-south line and that's a parallel north-south line okay put that in your head see sketch below sorry see sketch to the left the boom is kept in position by a cable attached high up on the mast of the ship there's it over there so it can pivot there and it's held in position there the fish net is raised out of the water by a rope that passes over a pulley the pulley is over there attached to the free end of the boom oh, free end because it can move calculate the tension in the rope or the cable and the compression in the boom C there we go so in that rope we've got nine kilometers sorry nine kilonewtons we've got of we've got the tensile load of 15 kilonewtons and the question says find the tension in the cable find the compression in the boom okay now this question is still being nice to you I mean I'll the next question that come after this I will say calculate the forces in the cable and the boom and determine whether they are compression or tension you must know that okay now people the joint in question is this joint over here okay so if I change the color but like so change two lines okay so here's my north south line north south line over there okay so if I 
if I take this out of there and convert it to and if I draw this joint like so it's going to look something like so here's my north south line let me draw the forces in um, uh, there's my cable here's my boom and there's this force coming out at an angle we're going to put the angles in now and here's the force going down of nine all right so let's put all the knowns in now people very important we are only concerned with what's happening around the joint here so this year this force will be pulling away like i got it there it's in tension okay that is a horizontal line that's my okay this year is the compression in the boom all right so i'm going to call this c i'm going to call that t and i'm going to call that c okay and this one here is nine kilonewtons and i'm only consider what's happening in the cable closer to the pulley so that's nine kilonewtons and this one here is also in tension and that is 15 kilonewtons i'm only considering what's happening around here that's pulling away that's pulling away that's pulling away pushing towards pulling away pulling away pulling away pushing towards tension 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 always pushes away from the joint and that joint there or center there is the center of the pulley and compression always pushes toward the joint we either call that a joint in structures or we call it a node okay you're learning so much it's amazing right Ryan so tension is always pulling away from a joint pulling away pulling away we know this we know this we don't know that we need to find it compression is always pushing toward the joint we need to find it I've called it C for compression you can call it A B C whatever but I made a T and C for myself because I know T for tension C for compression right the next thing is let's put in the values okay let's see that there if I just uh, clean this up a bit again yeah I draw a line like so. I draw a line like so. Okay. Those two lines is that line there and that one over there. Okay. Run. Now, if I. Okay, okay let, me, let me do this. Let me finish it off. If I continue that line there, and that's a vertical line over there. You will agree with me, of course you will agree because you're smart people. That's a right angle over there. So what's that angle inside there? That angle is 20 degrees, there we go. And what's this angle inside there? That's a little one there, it is 30 degrees, there we go. Okay. So, and the angle inside there is 30. Right. What's this angle inside there? Is that angle over there? How much is it? It's also 30. Now notice this angle, 30 degrees, lies between that force and that force, which are not on the vertical or horizontal. You never, never, never use that angle in a calculation. Did you get that? This angle lies between two forces there, whether it's known or unknown. You, none of these forces are on the vertical or horizontal. You never use that angle in a calculation. That happened to be 30, but you never use that angle. Okay? You only use angles between the force and the horizontal, or between the force and the vertical. You only use an angle between the force and the horizontal, or that and the horizontal and the vertical, or that and the vertical, that one between the vertical, or that and the horizontal. You never use that. For example, that angle between those two is 50. You never use 50 degrees. It's always between the force and the vertical, and the force horizontal. Ryan. Next thing I do is I resolve into components. Right, let me change the color here. I'm gonna say that is right. That's 30. So that's 30 there. 
So that's going to be um, C cos 30. You know why is that? C cos 30. And that's going to be C sin 30. And I'm going to resolve this one here as well. I'm going to make it another color. Right. Oh, that's nasty, isn't it? Make it nicer. There we go. It's better. Right. That's 30. That's 30. That angle there is not 30. That angle is 60. I'm going to use that one. So that will be 15 cos 30. And that's going to be 15 sine 30 degrees. Okay. Right. Am I done? No. I need to resolve all forces on the vertical horizontal. I'm going to make that an um, orangey color. Alright, I'm going to make so. Remember, if I extend this arrow, it's going to be sitting over there. They all emanate, all the vectors start from the same point. Okay, remember I said it in the last lesson? Right, that angle is 20, so that's going to be T cos 20. T cos 20. And that's going to be T times sine of that same angle. Sine 20 degrees. Do we resolve that one then? No, because it's on the vertical. Right. This is some liquor one, this one. You know, it's a liquor one, this one. Nice juicy one. Right. What's the next thing we do? We sum verticals and we sum horizontals. Right. Now, our space is a bit of a problem. I'll have to jig up a problem here. How many verticals do we have? We've got one, two, three, four. Plus T sine 20, plus C sine 30, minus 15 cos 30, minus 9. Okay. Now, people, and notice in the previous examples, we just added them together because this point here under question was going somewhere. But this system here, the whole system, is in equilibrium. So what does equilibrium mean? That even though this force is acting, the net sum of all the forces acting together is equal to zero. That's right. Okay. So on the vertical, we're going to have plus T sine 20, plus C sine 30, minus 15 cos 30, minus 9 equal to zero. And notice there, in that one equation alone, we're going to have T and C as an unknown. So can we solve it? No, we can't solve it. Okay, let me make this a bit smaller. Let me see if I can make up some space here. Just give me a second. Right, I'll move this around a bit slightly. So, I'm going to sum verticals. The sum of the verticals, watch this, watch this, is equal to zero. That's a very important statement. Why is it equal to zero? Because the whole system is in equilibrium. So, that means the net sum of it is zero. Right, I'm summing verticals. I can take the four in any order. It doesn't matter, but I just need to take them all. So I'm going to start with that. T sine 20, it's plus, so it's T sine 20. Plus C sine 30. Minus 15 cos 30. M minus 9 is equal to 0. Can I solve it? No, I can't, because I've got two unknowns, right? But let me state, let me state the uh, statement for horizontals. The sum of the horizontals is also equal to zero because the whole system is equilibrium. That is how this set of problems is different from the previous ones. Uh, horizontal plus T cos 20. Why is it plus? Because it's going horizontally to the right. And notice there, I'm writing my unknowns below each other. Mm -mm. We work systematically, others we just, we fool ourselves and we make it hard for ourselves. T cos 20, minus C cos 30, um, plus 15 sine 30. Why 
Are there any more horizontals? There's no more. So it's equal to zero. And notice, notice, notice. We've got two equations with two unknowns. So what do we do? Yes, from here, this people, in my opinion, this is applied mechanics. The rest of the year is high school work. Okay? We need to solve them simultaneously. Now, whenever I solve simultaneously, I do it my way. You do it your way. There's always great argument and debate when we're in a class. Solve it simultaneously like you know and get it correct. Okay? Solve it simultaneously so that you find the value for T and the value for C. And that is the compression and that's the tension in the table and the boom. And then it will be job done okay right i'm gonna see if i can give us some space here uh, make smaller and solve it my way um and do it your way stop the video and see that you get the same answers if you get the same answers as me then you're doing well okay all right people as i said there's always a big debate um so if i take this here um oops um, I'm going to take my nodes across, so I'm going to have T sine 20, I'm going to convert that to a number. So that is going to be, no, oh, sorry man. Three for two T plus sine 30 would be 0 0.5, 0 0.5 C. Take all of that over, cross there, that will give me 21.990 okay and that's my equation one now do the same year um that will be cost 20 is point nine four o t minus north and notice i'm working to three places after the decimal because when I work with three ratios, they are all small in one, so I'm just working to three, just to improve the, the accuracy slightly. So that will be C, and I take all the nouns across, and I get a um, minus 7.5 naught naught, and that is my equation two. Now people, there's my two equations with all my nouns on the right hand side, and my unknown variables on the left hand side with the T's and C's below each other. Solve simultaneously. I don't care how you do it. Here's just mathematics, okay? We're done with the plan mechanics. Get it right. And after all that is said and done, I'll find a value. T is equal to 19.96. Is it newtons, kilonewtons? It is kilonewtons. If you leave kilonewtons out, I take a one no mark, okay? And T is intention. That's how I call it that. Okay, and C is equal to 30.33 kilonewtons, and it's in compression. Okay, right. I'm just underlining it, make it look a small liquor that it stands out because that's the answers over there. Right, I've called T in the, I've called the T in the cable as tension, so T is in tension, so. The tension in the cable T is 19.96 kilonewtons, and the force in the boom is 30.33 kilonewtons. Um, this doesn't um, just change quickly. Yeah? And it's in compression. People, that answers the question there. Okay, so you can see it's fairly involved. Okay, you need to get all of this correct here. Yeah. Okay, you need to get. You can see there that, for example, if I get this arrow here, the direction this way around, if I do this, okay, then I'm going to resolve this one like that. I'm just showing you roughly, okay. And when I do this, when I, when, when I, when I, when I sum these, okay, I'm going to get that to be a minus sign and I'm going to get that to be a plus, let me see, horizontal. No, that's going to be minus and that's going to be minus, okay. And of course, once I go from here to there, all of this here is going to be different, and the answers there are going to be so wrong. Okay, so just assuming something in the wrong direction, even though you did the correct mathematic calculation, you will not get the right answer. And of course, if you do the wrong here and you get the right answers, that's magic. Ne? Magic. And magic doesn't happen in structures. It works or it doesn't work. There's no gray area. Okay, so people, 
that is how we solve that one over there okay so um work through it and check through everything that I did so do your your, your simultaneous your simultaneous equation correctly if you got 19.97 or if you got 20 point naught that is fine I'll accept it if you got 30.4 or 30.37 or you got 30.4 2 that's okay if you got that if you got 20 as a whole number if you got 30 as a whole number I'll accept that okay but it should be 19.9 point in, in that ballpark figure over there Okay, people, so that is how you do that particular example over there. Okay, I think I'll do one more and then you are ready to finish all the examples under this section, under this topic.